Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. My name is Antonisha Lachey and this is Deep Rooted Disciples. On this channel, we focus on building biblically literate, deep rooted disciples. And we do that by digging deep into God's word, by firmly planting our roots in Christ and by building our lives on him and following him. So if that is something that you're interested in, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Make sure you share with this video with someone who may be interested in it. Um, and leave me a comment below and let me know what you think about this new format. So so I am really, really excited to try out this new format for my Bible study with me videos. Um, I've already done videos on the intro to Genesis and then Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. I will link that whole Genesis playlist below. And I was doing um, a deep dive and I was recording myself doing my study and taking my notes and then going over all of the notes that I have that I've pulled from various commentaries and things like that. And I really, really enjoy studying my Bible that way. That is still the way that I study now. But what I've decided to do is change the format up a little bit and I will leave a link to um, my mid-month ministry update. It was a live stream that I did about a week ago now. And I basically discuss why I decided to do this change in format. So I am going to try this out for the rest of the year. And long story short, this allows me to kind of focus in on one main theme um, from that particular chapter or set of chapters that I am going over. And it allows me to hopefully make a little bit of a shorter video. Um, I do still have um, like a lo-fi study with me where you can see me taking all of my notes and everything. Um, and I still have the study guide as well. That video I posted yesterday, if you're watching this in real time when I posted it. So I will leave that video link below as well. And then you can get the study guide with all of the notes and everything that I took, if that is something that you're interested in and you're interested in deep diving the same way that I do. But I figured that um, by pulling out one main teaching point, um, it'll allow me to go a little bit deeper and give you more practical application um, for how this passage or this chapter or the set of chapters would apply to you today. Um, and I've basically done all of that deep diving that you have to do before you can get to that application stage. So again, I'm really, really excited to try out this new method. Let me know in the comments what you think if this is something that you would like for me to continue because I really uh, greatly appreciate you guys' feedback on these videos. So today we are starting, um, not starting, excuse me, we are talking about Genesis chapter three. Um, and the basic overview of Genesis chapter three is the fall. So we talk, um, we start off chapter three with um, Adam and Eve are in the Garden of Eden. And we immediately start with the serpent and the serpent tempting Eve, um, or excuse me, Satan tempts the woman. She's not yet named Eve. Um, and that is something I have to keep reminding myself of kind of the timeline of when everything is happening. But we know her now as Eve, but she had not yet been named. So Satan tempts the woman. She is deceived by Satan and she sins. She eats from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Um, and then she gives the fruit to Adam and Adam also takes it and eats it and he sins as well. And then they try to hide from God and all, all of the things that go with that. God comes down, God uh, curses the serpent, God curses Adam and Eve, um, and they're kicked out of Eden. And that's basically what happens in Genesis chapter three. There's a lot of details. And so that is why I highly recommend that you really get in there and you read it for yourself and you dig deep into what is going on. But that is the general overview of chapter three. And so one of the themes that I really pulled out of this. And it, it really wasn't even a theme when you think about it in terms of when Genesis was written um, and who it was originally written for. Um, the, the theme that I pulled out of stay in your lane was not even a concept back then. It wasn't even a concept for us more than four or five years ago, probably. But that theme of stay in your lane um, kept coming up for various reasons. Right now, I am in this the season of praying about this ministry and what's going on with it and what God wants me to do with it. And I and God is constantly telling me to stay in my lane and not look at what is going on around me and what other Christian content creators are doing. And so that that theme of stay in your lane um, just kept coming to me. And as I kept digging into chapter three of Genesis, I kept seeing um, how that is actually playing out and how we can um, take heed to what's going on in there. So um Stay in your lane. I when I when you look it up, like if you Google it and it's like, what does stay in your lane mean? And you see a variety of definitions from like Urban Dictionary and stay in your lane has been put in some more um, widely accepted dictionaries, if you will. But it basically boils down to knowing who you are and knowing who you are not. 
um, knowing the limits of your insufficient knowledge, knowing the limits of your abilities. And this one may ruffle some feathers, especially as I'm going to apply it to um, this chapter today, but knowing your roles, knowing your roles. And yes, I'm going to be specifically talking about the roles of husbands and wives in this. And I know it may ruffle some feathers, but y'all stay to the end. Hear me out. So the first one we're talking about is knowing um, the limits that you have. And so the first thing that came to mind was do not waste your time entertaining sin. So I have my Bible here in front of me as well as some, no as some notes. But the very first verse in chapter three, chapter three, verse one, it says, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And so there, there are things, and I say this all the time, everything that is in the Bible is here for a reason. And it's one of those, like, that is one of those lines where it's just like, obviously we know that the serpent is crafty and cunning as you read this account and what happens but it's like why was that particular verse placed in there like why was that reminder of how crafty the serpent was and the fact that the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the lord god had made and the thing that came to me with that is we and i had pulled some notes from um the commentaries as well that says we are the most intelligent beings that God created. We are. We are more intelligent than the serpent. We are more intelligent than Satan and the enemy. But we have to remember that the enemy spends every single moment trying to be crafty, trying to be deceptive, trying to get us to sin. We, even though we are very, very intelligent as human beings, we don't spend every single waking moment or even every single sleeping moment trying to figure out how to get over on people. I mean, unfortunately, there are some humans who do, but as a whole, we as humans do not spend every single moment and every single thought trying to figure out how to be crafty and deceptive and how to get over on people. And that is what the enemy spends every single moment doing. And therefore, the enemy is more crafty and more deceptive than we are. And so what something that came to me is like, we cannot outsmart Satan. We cannot. And the, if we even try, we've already lost. You've already lost if you do not know the limits of your abilities in that. Because you've already lost if you're trying to outsmart Satan. What we can do is we can overcome the enemy. In the name of Jesus and the power of Jesus, we can rebuke Satan and say, you know what, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not entertaining this. And so for me, so do not waste your time entertaining sin. If you think about it on a, like a day-to-day -day practical level, you hear all the time, do not engage in conversations with certain types of people. There are certain types of people that it doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter how logical your argument is, they are being illogical, they are being irrational. So it does not matter what you say to them, it's not gonna get across to them. So you are wasting your time entertaining a conversation and you know who that person is. Some people, unfortunately, you won't know it until you get into the conversation, but there are some people and there are some situations you know upfront that this is gonna be a waste of my time having this conversation because this person is not gonna listen to anything that I have to say. Doesn't matter how much sense it makes, doesn't matter if I'm right and they're wrong, it doesn't matter. And so that's the first thing I'm like, do not waste your time entertaining sin. Do not sit and think, oh, well, the enemy thinks he's smart. Well, I'm smarter. And then we're going to go back to back. Because the minute you decide to engage in that type of battle and you are relying on your own strength and your own will, you've already lost that. The only time you engage in battle and in, in spiritual warfare with the enemy, you are engaging in that using the Holy Spirit and using the power of Jesus. And that's a whole different thing. But when you decide I'm going to go back, you know, back and forth and have a conversation and try to outsmart the enemy on my own, you, you've already lost that battle. Um, and so that was one of the things that um, really stood out to me immediately. Um, and then another thing was about knowing who you are and knowing who you are not and staying in your lane in that sense and stop trying to be God Stop trying to be God and try to be more like Jesus. And I'm not saying not to try to be God-like, but I'm saying stop trying to be God. Um, and so in verse, let's see, chapter three, verse five. So verse five, it says, so this is um, the serpent having a conversation with Eve. Eve had basically, because, you know, the serpent's like, well, did God really say? And Eve is having this conversation 
um, or the woman rather, is having this conversation with the serpent and she is saying what she thinks God said. And we're going to get to that in a second as well. But the serpent says to her, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And so the thing that stood out to me is like Eve and the serpent had already been having this conversation a little bit. And it was that statement because then in verse six, it says, so when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise or to make one like God, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. So Satan had already said a couple things to her. But then when he says, it's going to make you like God, it's going to open your eyes and God knows this. That was that tipping point when she went ahead and she kind of fell all in and she sinned. And so the notes that I have here is, again, stop trying to be God or trying to be. And I'm, I don't want to say stop trying to be like God, but just stop trying to be God, because that was what this situation was, because it says the goal of becoming God is the center of so many non-Christian religions new age religions, all kinds of different things. We are not even going to get into it in this video, but that is the goal of so many people and so many people who claim to not be religious at all, but it is their goal to be God. And it's even in people's minds again. So it's not just a religious thing. Even those who say that they're not religious like that, that is a goal. And some people may not think about it like that. Like, oh no, I'm not trying to be God. No, I'm not trying to be a creator, but you are. It says in our desire to be God's, we become like Satan, wanting to exalt his throne above the, st the stars of God. And that's from Isaiah chapter 14, verses 13 through 14. That was Satan's desire. Satan said he wanted to be God. He wanted to exalt his throne up in the stars of God. He wanted to be bigger and better than God. And that was his downfall. It says, in contrast, we should be like Jesus who came as a servant. In Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, yeah, verse 28 Jesus said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve and to die for the many. Jesus came here to be a servant and we need to be striving to be more Christ-like instead of being more God-like or trying to. And, and like I said, I, 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 I say that very cautiously because trying to become more like God, that is humanity's highest goal because we are created as God's image bearers. So we are created to glorify him and to be more like him, but we are not created to be him or to be higher or greater than him. Um, and it's like I said, trying to be more godlike, which is our highest goal, is not the same as trying to be God. Um, it says, as soon as we begin to leave God out of our plans, we are placing ourselves above him and we have that self exaltation. And that's what I'm talking about, where a lot of people do not even realize that, that it's what they're doing and believers do it as well believers non-believers other religions we do it the minute we say i am going to do xyz or i am going to work to get this promotion or i am going to get a hundred thousand subscribers on youtube whatever it is that you saying that you are trying to do and you've left god out of that plan you are exalting yourself above god and then you are trying to be god and like i said a lot of times it happens unintentionally unfortunately some people intentionally do it but you have to remember who you are and who you are not and stay in your lane because you are not god you will never be god you will never come anywhere close to being god you can continue to strive to be more christ-like and to be more like god but the minute you start trying to be god that's when we have a problem um and the third one we're going to talk about it. I like I literally just got like butterflies in my stomach because I know that people have so many polarizing opinions about this believers and non-believers alike, especially with what society and with what culture is telling us right now. But you have to know your roles. You have to know your roles. And again, I'm specifically referring to the roles of husbands and wives. And I'm pulling out my iPad really quickly because I want to read. Um, so you guys know my Bible is ESV. I have the Bible app. I'm always looking at different translations. And so I'm going to read to you Colossians chapter three, verses 18 through 19. And this is in the Amplified version. Now first, let me read it in the ESV. ESV says, wives submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands love your wives and do not be harsh with them. The Amplified version 
it says, it's just the same thing again, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verses 18 through 19. The Amplified version says, wives, be subject to your husbands out of respect for their position as protector and their accountability to God, as is proper and fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives with an affectionate, sympathetic, selfless love that always seeks the best for them. And do not be embittered or resentful toward them because of the responsibilities of marriage. So again, that amplified version really nailed home um, the reason why you need to know your roles. Wives, out of respect for their position as the protector and their accountability to God, and husbands, selfless love that always seeks the best for them. This is why, husbands, you are to love your wives, and this is how you are to love your wives wives this is why and how you are to submit to your husband and so the reason why i brought up knowing your roles um is because of this this whole um situation so from uh chapter three verse one all the way through do 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 verse six when they actually sin so and it's brought up a lot of times but satan tempted eve not adam and a lot of people are like, oh, well, she was the woman. She was the weaker sex. That's why she was the one that was tempted. But the, the thing is, you have to notice that it specifically says in verse one, he, referring to Satan, he said to the woman, he said to the woman, but when you go down to verse six, when they actually ate the fruit, says, um, I'm kind of skipping ahead a little bit. She took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her. So Adam and Eve were together. He was with her. But Satan spoke directly to Eve, even though they were both together. And I was digging into and that, that was something that really stood out to me. And it was like, and so, of course, people are like, oh, well, Eve was the one that was tempted because she's a woman and she's a weaker sex. But satan did not even speak the serpent didn't even speak to to adam the serpent spoke to the woman to eve and so in my notes i had here i said satan perceived her to be more vulnerable to attack not because she was a woman but because she did not receive the command directly from god but through adam so you have to remember let me flip back a little bit so this is in genesis chapter 2 and we talked about it um this is genesis chapter 2 verse 15 through 17 the lord god took the man and put him in the garden of eden to work it and keep it and the lord god commanded the man the lord god commanded the man saying you may surely eat of every tree of the garden but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat it for in the day that you eat it excuse me for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die so again this is genesis chapter 2 verses 15 through 17 it is not until verse 21 that God puts Adam to sleep and then forms Eve. So when God commanded Adam not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Adam was the only one that existed besides all the animals and everything. Eve did not yet exist. So Satan tempted her, not because she was a woman and she was weaker, but because she had not received the command directly from God. She received it from Adam. And if you pay attention in verse two of chapter three, Eve says, says, and the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. So that's chapter three, verses two through three. God never said anything about not touching the tree lest you die. He said, you shall not eat of it. And that goes to show you because her knowledge of that command was secondhand. She did not get that command directly from God. She got it from Adam. And in getting that command from Adam, somehow something got lost in translation. And the minute that she said that, the minute that she said, neither shall you touch it lest you die, the serpent knew he had her. He knew he had her because she didn't fully know what it was that God said. Now, this is a whole thing for me getting on why you need to be reading your Bible. But we'll talk about that in a different video because you need to know what God says. So when you are tempted, you are able to defend yourself with the truth and not what you think the truth is so that's one thing but again she received the command through adam and it says satan will often attack a chain at its weakest link so he got to adam by tempting eve the stronger one in the chain must expect an attack against weaker links and guard and support them against those attacks 
in the order of creation, man is always going to be the strongest one in the chain because that is how God created them to be. God created man first. God gave the command to man. God created man to be the stronger one. So yes, women, we are the weaker link in the chain, but not because we are a woman, but this is how God created it to be. And God gave the command to man. He gave the command to man and man is supposed to instruct and direct his wife accordingly. And so when we get back to that, knowing your roles, I had it here in my notes. I said, men, guard your wives. Um, when you look at what I was reading in Colossians, it's saying that women, you are su to submit to your husband to respect the authority and the position that he has as protector. And in order, he has that, and men, you have that role as protector. You should be protecting your wives. You should be instructing her and you should be directing her according to God's word. And I'm just like, there's there's just so much we can unpack with this. And I don't, I don't want to drag it on too long, but... Um, I just had in my notes, I said, you know, men should love their wives as Christ loved the church. And this includes instruction and direction as well as protection. And I had another note and I don't know what I did with it, but that's okay. Um, and again, coming back to women submitting to their husbands, because again, the men are accountable to God. And even in that amplified version, they are accountable to God. Even when you look in chapter three, if we get to the end, not to the end, but in verse 17, so after everything is happening, God is God has cursed the serpent. God has cursed Eve and told her she's going to um, have your pain and childbearing and all of these other things. And your husband's going to rule over you. And this is God speaking, starting in chapter, um, excuse me, chapter three, verse 17. And to Adam, he said, he being God, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree, you listen to the voice over your wife over listening to the commands that I, God, gave you. And so again, God was holding Adam accountable to listening to what his wife said, knowing that what his wife said was going against what God had commanded him to do. And so that is another reason why I feel that wives, you should submit to your husband because God is going to give the plan to your husband. And if you do not submit to your husband, if your husband is not properly directing you and instructing you on the plans that God has given him, there's going to be a problem and you are going to lead your husband to sin because you don't fully know the plan. And so there was also a note in the commentary that um, wasn't surprising to me, but it did st stand out to me. And I wanted to mention it. It's saying it was also in God's plan to allow Satan to tempt Eve this way. And again, going back to knowing those roles, if Adam would have sinned first and gave the fruit to Eve, Eve would have had the partial excuse that she was obeying the head of her home. Now, this being women submitting to the authority of your husband, it does have a caveat. If your husband is tempting you or leading you to sin against God, then in that instance, you have the right to deny your husband and say no, because you are to love and serve God above all others, even your husband. So if your husband is leading you to sin against God, then in that sense, no, you do not uh, submit to your husband's will when he is going against God. But in any other situation, you are to submit to the authority of your husband. And so that's why I said she would have the partial excuse, the partial excuse in that she could say, oh, I was just doing what the head of my home said. But at the same time, that was still sinning against God. So it wasn't, it wasn't going to be a full excuse and fully passable. But again, we, we, we go back to the Adam and Eve were together. Satan didn't even speak to Adam because Adam had received that command directly from God. Adam had, and Adam knew better. And that's yet another reason why, even as you go further into scripture, even though Eve was the one that sinned first and she gave the fruit to Adam, Adam is the one that bears the blame for that sin. I know that we want to blame Eve and we want to say that, oh, women ruined the world because of Eve and all of this. But if you look in scripture, Adam is always the one who is blamed for the fall of man because he was responsible for Eve's actions. He was responsible for directing her and instructing her. But even more so, Eve was deceived by the serpent because she 
kind of sort of didn't know better. She didn't fully know better because she didn't fully know the command because she didn't receive that command from God. And obviously, like I said, at some point, it got lost in translation between Adam giving her the command because she threw in this part about God said you said you shouldn't touch the tree. And that was never part of the command. But when Eve gave that fruit to Adam, he very well knew what he was doing. He was not being deceived. She gave it to him. He knew what the command was that God gave him. And he chose to sin against God to listen to his wife. And so that is why Adam is always blamed for the downfall of man. But again, it just goes back to men know your role. And I know I'm speaking mostly to women on this channel. So women, you need to submit to your husband and his role as the head of your home because again God is going to give those plans to him it is his responsibility to love you and to protect you and to instruct you and to guide you and to make sure that he puts this hedge of protection over you as the weakest link in this bond that the two of you have and you are to then submit to his authority in order to respect the position of protection that he has but also to respect the fact that at the end of the day your husband is going to be accountable to God for did he do what he was called to do in the relationship? Did he lead you? Did he guide you? Did he protect you? Did he love you? But then you are still going to be held accountable to God for did you submit to your to your husband? And I know, like I said, this can go so many different ways. I know there are a lot of different um, cultural reasons why women are so against this and I don't care what culture says, but there are even reasons where women are like, well, my husband's not a believer or any of these things. There are many, many places in scripture. And if you guys want me to do a whole nother video on that, I can most definitely do that. There are a lot of places in scripture where it still tells you as a wife, you are still to submit to the authority of your husband. You are still supposed to honor the position of your husband, because even if he's not a believer, your godliness, because you are submitting to your husband, because that is what God told you to do. Therefore, you are submitting to God. And hopefully um that your husband will begin to see that and that will begin that heart change and god will be able to work in him to get him to do what he's supposed to do but at the end of the day you are going to be held accountable and god is going to ask did you submit to your husband the way that i told you to and god doesn't want to hear oh well i didn't submit to my husband because he wasn't doing xyz that you told him to do because he has to answer for that you are not going to answer for your husband you are going to answer for your own actions and so that's how I'm kind of wrapping up with this is knowing your roles and staying in your lane. And like I said, this can be even in this one chapter can be approached so many different ways. And like I said, it was something that was already on my heart and already on my mind, um, not even having to do with, you know, your roles and anything, but knowing who I am and who I'm not knowing what God has called me to do. And what he's called that content creator over there to do knowing what god has called you to do and what he called that person over there that works in in you know your department at work what he called them to do and you are not the same god didn't call you to do the same thing so stay in your lane and focus on who you are who you are not what god has called you to do don't worry about what god has called somebody else to do knowing the limits of your abilities and also knowing the limits of your insufficient knowledge because we can only make decisions and do things with what knowledge we have and it is extremely limited especially when you compare it to god knowing everything and all things so stay in your lane follow the path that god has laid out for you stick to those roles know your roles and stay in them despite what society and culture may be saying and Above all else, just pray. You, you pray about it. If you have questions about it, if you don't understand, if you're struggling with it, you pray. You pray for God to give you a passion and a desire to study and to know his word. You stay in his word. You pray for God to give you a heart change if that's what's needed. You pray for God to give your spouse a heart change if that's what's needed. You pray for God on behalf of other people who may be interfering with you doing what you know God has called you to do. Guys, I hope you enjoy this, um, like I said, this new format of how I'm doing these Bible studies with me. I um, I see myself really enjoying this and being able, especially as we are in the Old Testament. I know sometimes it's harder for us to pull out how can we apply that to our, our everyday life now. And a big part of that is because of 
all of the work that's needed to deep dive into what it meant for them in their time. So I'm really enjoying this process and creating these types of videos for you. So again, let me know if this is something that you are interested in me continue, continuing to do. Um, again, I will try to continue this throughout um, the rest of this year for um, the rest of the Genesis study. And then as we get to the new year, um, if you guys are requesting something different, then we can kind of pray about it together and see how we go from there. But if you guys have any questions, any comments, please continue the conversation in the com in the conversation section, in the comment section below. Again, please share this video with anyone who you think may benefit from it. And be sure to subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.